in fact, um, I have a really good friend. I can't tell you his name because he's a part of a very, very heavy metal band. And uh, we've been friends since the 80s. And he called me, uh, got my number from somebody, he said, I'm me. Uh, I just want to tell you, I love your music. Do you, can we have lunch or something sometime? I said, sure. So we did. And he said how much he loved our music, how much the guys he worked with loved our music. He said, but we can't tell anybody because we'll get it, you know, shit can for being listening to that kind of music. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. I wonder who to sing. Who could it be? A heavy metal band, a big no. heavy metal band. You'll never give it up, but um, no. you can't give never. away the secret. Would it be, okay, well, I wouldn't consider Guns N' Roses a heavy metal, but if I was going to pick, I'd pick either an Axel or a James Hetfield from Metallica. No, no, you're close. <laughs> With, uh, you're not close with Guns N' Roses, but Guns N' Roses, if I may tell you a couple of stories. Absolutely, please do. The guy that used to do our security, uh, Doug Goldstein, his name is. I know Doug. Yeah. You, oh, well. well he ended I up used to play in a band with Gilby Clark of Guns N' Roses and Stephen Adler, the original drummer. Wow. Yeah. I'm not just an ordinary podcast. I'm a musician that's easy to talk to. So. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Welcome to Artist on Record, your ultimate intimate conversation with your favorite artist in the hot seat from Air Supply, the legendary Mr. Russell Hitchcock. Today in this clip, Russell meets Axel Rose. I Hitch Guns and Roses, and uh, he called me, and I was living in LA then, and he said, I've got some good news and some bad news. And I said, Okay, I don't care what you give me first. And he says, Well, the good news is Axel wants to have dinner with you. And I said, okay, what's the bad news? And he said he wants to have dinner with you tonight. And I said, okay. So we went to uh, this place in LA that I used to frequent uh, in the early hours called the Rainbow. Have you been there? Of course, yeah, very well. I know very well. Uh, anyway, uh, I was there for a little while and Axel came in with Doug and sat down and, and Axel raved about what a great singer I was and, you know, and I don't. I don't take compliment well, you know, I just go, thanks. And that's what, what are you supposed to say, you know? Anyway, he said, uh, you, you, you have the record for holding the longest note on a song on a love at the end. And I said, you know, whatever. I mean, that's not even, I don't even think about that. It was just, you know, whatever it was, you know, and he yeah. said, do you mind if I re recorded a song and held a note longer than you? And I said, what are you asking me for, dude? You know, do, do what you want. I mean, do what you want. I mean, great. <laughs> that yeah. is funny. We had a nice dinner and, and um, he left and I left. And sometime later, Doug called me and he said, what are you doing on the weekend? And I was at home for a bit then. It was one of our low periods of touring. Yeah. And he said, uh, Guns N' Roses are playing the Freddie Mercury memorial concert at Wembley you want to go and I said I'd love to but I can't afford to and he said no no you you've you've treated me unbelievably when I was with working with the band and I'll I want to fly you over there everything's taken first class hotel blah blah blah, blah. and I said awesome you know and I was thrilled to death because I got over there and the Friday night before the show well I flew on the same plane as everybody but Axel and um it was in the old days where there was a lounge in the front of the plane and we were having drinks sitting around yeah. the table. And uh, so I got to the hotel and uh, I went down to the bar, which was my <laughs> my go-to anywhere I got into, I'd go to the bar. And uh, Slash was there and some other guys, I think Joe Elliott and I can't really remember. And they were all singing songs and we were singing and I was singing with them. And it was just, I wish I'd had a phone, cell phone oh, then. Totally. That's and, a magic uh, moment. Yeah. Anyway, the next day they picked me up and take me to Wembley. And, you know, I was I was walking past Annie Lennox and David Bowie and and uh, you name it, uh, George Michael, Elton John. And I was just blown away because I'm a fan still more than I'm anything, you know. So anyway, I, I was uh, I went backstage and there was a car park right there. Um and I saw Axel and he was leaning up against a, a concrete pillar, you know. And I went up and I said, hey, Axel, what's going on? And he looked at me 
And uh, I was embarrassed already straight away, you know. And I said, yeah, I met you at the Rainbow. I had dinner with you and Doug Russell, air supply. And he goes, uh, don't recall. <laughs> really? Yeah. And uh, I, t- I had a two-word two, two word, uh, bye-bye to him and I just left. I thought, what a dick, you know. Wow. And then the, at the, in the dressing rooms, they were all pipe and drape just with a card with the name of the act on it, you know. And he, he was the only guy to have a dressing room in the whole. I'm talking about big stars, you know. Mm-hmm. They had trailers, the big, big stars, but he had a dressing room with two guys standing outside, like, you know, this, and I'm thinking, what a joke. Anyway, uh, they did their, I think they played a couple of songs, and it was cool, you know, everything was like every act was on. There was no downtime between acts. They had moving rises and all this stuff to get it together. And uh, we were watching TV, a, a bunch of big, big stars with, with me. And uh, the commentator came on and he said, it's been a wonderful day. And except for a lacklustre set from Guns N' Roses... And uh, the doors burst open and Axel goes, where is that? I'm going to kick his ass. And, hey, what are you? and everybody's looking at him like, why don't you just sit down, bro? You know, you ain't that important in the scheme of things today. <laughs> that was Mr. Russell Hitchcock. We'll be releasing more clips of my conversation with Russell. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell to be notified. And if you want to see this episode unedited right now, join our Members Only Club right here on YouTube. Until then, we'll catch you all later. And remember, who loves you, baby? We do.